What is going on guys? So today we are going to be taking an in-depth look at the reworked skill Elusive Mist. Now this skill is, is changed completely. Uh, before it was like a toggle and kind of mitigated damage and now it's similar to Streak. It is a complete and utter rework of the entire skill. Now instead of just explaining what they did and what it looks like in the animation, I wanted to take a deep dive into provide the pros and the cons of using this skill in update 37 if it remains unchanged going into the last week of the PTS. And currently we are about to hit week two of the PTS just in a few short days. So who knows how this skill may be adjusted or changed in the future. But if you guys are enjoying the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. And also if you're interested, I have a Discord server, uh, ESO PVP Academy. It is designed as a resource to help newer or returning players improve and get better at PVP. And I'll leave a link down in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. So what are the pros of using Elusive Mist? Now, this skill, it, it's it's very interesting. Like, they didn't change the passives per se, but they changed its whole functionality and how it works. It no longer mitigates, like, damage by 75%. It now provides you with a three projectile absorption. So let me read the tooltip and let me kind of explain some of the pros. So disperse into a dark mist, causing the next three projectiles to deal no damage to you for one second while you dash forward and reappear at your target location after a short duration. You gain major expedition and major evasion for four seconds after reappearing, increasing your movement speed by 30% and reducing your damage taken from area of effect attacks by 20%. Casting again within four seconds does, however, increase the cost by 33% more magic. So I am currently in stage three vampire and I think I have like five pieces of light armor on. So my cost of Elusive Mist is only 2540, which is relatively cheap. Now, we have to compare Elusive Mist to other skills of the same category and kind of how you're gonna, you're gonna use them. So for the most part, you can compare Elusive Mist to something like Race Against Time and Streak. Now they all provide their different utilities and different types of, of help in certain situations. But in my opinion, Elusive Mist, I think it is good but it's not gonna be like the end all be all. I think there's a few situations where Elusive Mist can benefit some certain builds, but one of the main issues is gonna be bar space. So if you are above stage two vampire, a good pro for Elusive Mist is gaining 300 weapon and spell damage. Now this will benefit classes and builds that stack a lot of weapon and spell damage, typically with Sea Serpent's Coil, something of that variation, stacking a lot of weapon and spell damage. So this is one significant buff that before Elusive Mist just didn't really work half the time sometimes. And it was it was a toggle that was very finicky, especially in laggy situations. It just didn't work. And that's one thing we don't know yet. If it's gonna actually function and, and work in a live environment where there's a little bit of lag here and there. I don't know. So we, we can't test that because we can't get enough people in the obviously on the PTS to simulate lag. So we have to kind of just assume it's gonna work. And if it doesn't, then then we'll have have some definitely have some problems. But that's one pretty big bonus to running something like Elusive Mist is you get the, you know, all the buffs, the major evasion, uh, the the major movement speed or whatever that's called, major expedition. And you're also getting um, 300 weapon and spell damage. Also, if you are stage three, again, you do gain the uh, undeath passive, giving you more mitigation. So there's overall some powerful buffs that you are getting from using Elusive Mist and being in a higher stage, because this does reduce the cost of it. I mean, we compare this to Race Against Time, for example, which is going to be its biggest counterpart, because pretty much every class has access to now Elusive Mist or Race Against Time. This gives you four seconds of snare immunity, and then it gives you major expedition and minor force. So for critical damage builds, obviously Race Against Time is going to be a better option, but I think for more weapon damage, spell damage stacking builds, Elusive Mist may, may be a considerable option to try. Um, and especially if you're running something like Sea Serpent's Coil, since Sea Serpent's will snare you by 40%, this allows you to move at a blazing fast speed while you're snared. So during the animation of, of it, it shooting you forward, it will increase your movement speed. So that is one powerful pro I think that, that Elusive Mist will help you with if you're gonna be using Sea Serpent's Coil. And one other difference between like Race Against Time and Elusive Mist is Race Against Time doesn't necessarily push you forward, right? So like Elusive Mist, it, it pushes you forward in a quick burst and you can get behind an object or something like that. Well, while Race Against Time, just kind of, you know, you just kind of run, right? It just increases your movement speed 
and it doesn't really give you any type of mitigation. Typically when you're getting chased, I think in an open field situation, I think Elusive Mist will definitely help because nine times out of 10, most of the time you're getting zerged down by people, you're getting hit by range attacks. If you are gonna be a little bit faster than most people, having a range projectile absorption making you take no damage from all those attacks is not too shabby. I'm not going to be honest. I mean, if you're getting chased down by, you know, there's a few people here and you're, you know, right here in the open and you pop your elusive mist and you can get around the corner, this does serve its purpose and it actually will perform better than something like Race Against Time in that scenario. And then also with the, with the nerf to blockade, which I think is very important, I think elusive mist may be a little bit better. So this no longer immobilizes with a frost it will only snare them it doesn't immobilize so you don't get like frozen in place whenever you get hit by blockade so this kind of gives a pseudo buff to elusive mist and a kind of a pseudo nerf to race against time because you had all these ice wardens around and you're going to use your race against time to get out of those snares now you don't even need those you're going to be snared anyways if you're going to be using sea serpent's coil so that's where the value and kind of a pseudo buff uh, comes into to arise with elusive mist over something like a race against time which i think should be noted very clearly and then if we're talking about the other morph blood mist let me let me change my morphs real quick and i'll kind of show you now blood mist has me semi excited for like a dk type of build i think that that's where the blood mist may be a potential option to use uh, in pvp over elusive mist so what Blood Mist does is it basically does the same thing. It doesn't give you the major expedition or evasion, but it now procs a AOE um, like blood sucking thing, like <laughs> tough as you could describe it. It's like the, the fart mist. It's still the same thing of, of what it was before, but it now lasts for 20 seconds and it still provides you with that burst of movement speed and the projectile absorption, I do believe. So. What does this mean? I, I think that overall Blood Mist may perform better on a coil build. Mainly the reason why is the expedition can be good and the evasion can be good, don't get me wrong. But if you're playing in a melee range, I think Blood Mist may be performing a little bit better because it's just gonna sap health from uh, your, your enemies and give it to yourself. So if you have three, four, five people on you and you're in that Blood Mist, and this is going to be AOE. So if you're using something like Talons on a Dragonite, it's going to be huge for your overall, can help you a little bit with your healing potential. It's not going to give you crazy, crazy, crazy healing because it only has a tooltip of 1220 and I'm not really running a high damage build. My build's very, very different. So it doesn't really scale up very well. We have 1324 tooltip. I don't, I doubt you'll be able to see upwards of 2K with this thing. So you're not talking about a huge amount of damage or healing potential, but it is something especially if you're stacking with guards, if you're stacking with players, you know, on a flag or something like that, that's where I can see the value of this. Because say for example, like here's the flag, right? You come in here and it's pretty wide AOE. So if you're using, like I said, talents, uh, you can get quite significant healing if you can stack all these with multiple different types of people and effects in AOE. So in conclusion, the pros I think for Elusive Mist are gonna be for the brawler build. Something using Sea Serpent's Coil, I think is gonna benefit from the most from this. I think some, uh, you know, Templars may, could, but I think for the majority of the situations, DKs are gonna be using this significantly more than uh, everybody else. So editing Godzilla here. Now, I was editing the video, the Elusive Mist video that you're watching right now, and I noticed this. So I was just running around and just, you know, listening to the recording. And I did this. You can jump after Elusive Mist. Now that is pretty big because you can transfer your momentum. So I can go Elusive Mist and then jump in a direction and get behind cover. So what I mean is you can go Blood Mist and then jump here. If I, if I actually can use my fingers, you can jump. So like if I actually am good at the game, you can like aim in the direction here and then like jump through and you can jump backwards. That's pretty cool, uh, honestly. I think that that may help it be a little bit better because then you could jump around and have some freedom of movement after you kind of, you know, move a little bit. So you can put yourself behind cover to make yourself a little bit harder of a target to, to hit. Um, I think it's pretty interesting and just wanted to share that with you guys. So now let's go over some of the cons. I think these are very important. Um, so the cons, is it's not much faster than basic, you know, basic race against time sprinting. 
Like it's not much faster. It is a little bit, but not much. You're talking about if you're if you're staying in melee range with something like one or two swift, you can pretty much stay on somebody with elusive mist. So you're not really gonna get away. The real value in it is the absorption of projectiles, I do believe, uh, to help kind of give you a burst of speed to get you out of line of sight from people using like a rating oppression and stuff like that. Another con is bar space. Bar space has never been like tighter in the game. It, like, bar space is a very, very big deal right now where you don't have a lot of room for skills on pretty much any build. There are so many decent skills now on most builds that Elusive Mist has to replace something. And what do you replace? It's hard to say. Um, it's hard to exactly quantify how this is actually going to perform in a live environment. In duels and in testing, running around, it's very easy to be like, oh yeah, this is cool. But how is it actually going to perform in a live type of gameplay where you have to make choices on the certain skills and abilities that you use? I think that's a big con of this. It's like now it's adding another skill in the arsenal of just overall pretty decent skills that you can incorporate on your builds. And it just makes it a hard decision and choice to use this. And also one other thing, if you do get immobilized, like with talents or something like that, it does not get rid of snares. Well, something like Race Against Time does. Take that for what you will. I mean, for the most part, anyways, you're just going to roll blood out of it, but it still does mean something. Like if you, you know, hit like your elusive Mr. Blood Mist, you will still be immobilized um, if you, if you blood mist out or try to try to push yourself away from, from the talons or, or from the immobilization. It doesn't remove it. It basically just makes it to where it's still on you even after you come out of the teleport. And one other con that I don't like about Elusive Mist or, or Blood Mist is if I streak, I can still keep moving my camera. Streak is a lot quicker than Blood Mist. Like it, it pushes you in a, a much quicker fashion to where you can actually move your camera and like snap around. But with Blood Mist, you're basically like, I'm moving my camera continuously, right? So I'm looking this way and I can't move my camera no more until I finally get out of it. So I'm holding it. I, I can finally move it once I get out of it. There's one thing I don't like about it. I would like to have freedom of movement similar to Streak, but I think the main reason why is it hasn't teleported you all the way there yet, so it doesn't allow you to move uh, your camera yet. So one other thing also about Elusive Mist is you can block while in it, and it allows you to block, you know, so if you're getting hit by melee attacks or whatever the case is, uh, you could still block um, those attacks whenever you're coming out of it. So that is definitely very, very nice to use. I mean, it's similar, to, it's basically exactly like Streak. It's gonna work pretty much identically to Streak. Um, one thing though, however, I don't like is like Streak, since it's faster, you kind of already are falling. So you're pushing yourself already in a certain direction. While like Elusive Mist and Blood Mist, it takes much longer to fall. Like you're in the air for a lot longer of time. Um, so it makes it feel like you're floating per se, and that leaves you very susceptible to getting hit. Um, and sometimes it's very finicky, like a, like Streak, it doesn't have a location that you're teleporting to. You have to have a teleport location because you'll see a little circle uh, on the ground here. You see a little circle that just popped up. It's very, very faint, but you have to have a location. So Streak allows you like any type of movement that you want. It allows an extreme freedom of movement. like. You don't have to have a location. So if I was up above, you know, on, on a very high rock, right? I'm gonna go over here. So if I'm up here and I streak off, it doesn't matter if I have a location. It's just gonna streak me off and I'll have to guess. I don't, I don't have to position my camera in a certain angle in a certain way and hold my tongue a certain way just to get it to work. With the, with, with the blood mist, it sometimes can do that. And that is not very good because then you're really not getting as far distance as you really wanted to. So certain situations, I don't think the blood mist performs something like streak. And I think it's something that I think you should notate uh, in your conclusion of if you want to run the skill or not, is it's going to take some getting used to quite significant. It's not going to be like other skills. It's very different. It's similar to streak, but very different in a certain way. Like, if with streak, I want to just streak off here, like I'm good, right? Like I can I can look this way and it'll take me to where I want to go. But Blood Mist, it, it, it may not work the same way. And that's what's what I'm trying to stress um, in this testing. Now, if you are if you are like a short distance between something, yeah, you could do it then and it'll give you some good some good movement. But if, if it's much, much higher, which sometimes in PvP, 
you do you do have a, an area where you're closer than or further than 15 meters away and it doesn't really allow you to to kind of push yourself where you'd want to go with something like blood mist you know i'm looking down here and it takes me here so that's the problems i have with this skill in a nutshell that's the really the cons is i just used it i'm looking at this way and it takes me that far so it doesn't propel me like i would like to uh and even if i look down it doesn't even let me do it so that that's that's a very big deal because then at that point i may i'm better off just using my feet and jumping down rather than using a, an ability but that may be something I have to adapt to in my playstyle if I wanted to use Blood Mist or Lucid Mist over, over something else. But that's going to be it for this video. I hope I hope this kind of explained how this skill is used and its function rather than just telling you, hey, this change is going to be amazing. But I wanted to provide some context on this skill and give you an in-depth look on it and provide some pros and cons of this skill in Update 37. That's going to be it for me, guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.